um, and to then take um, some, uh, some, some questions uh, from you. So with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Ed. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you uh, everybody who's joining us uh, this evening on what is a beautiful sunny evening here in Rome, and I'm sure uh, a beautiful sunny evening, one of the first days of summer um, across, uh, across Italy. Um, it's a huge uh, pleasure and honour for me uh, to be here today for my first uh, Facebook Live as the British Ambassador. Uh, here in Italy and also to San Marino, if we have any um, of our compatriots joining us. I think we have 11 Brits in um, San Marino, so maybe we have um, one or two of you, you joining us. But uh, it's a great honour and, and a pleasure, as I say, um, to, to be here. I've, I'm relatively new, as you probably know, as the ambassador. I know you've done a lot of these meetings with Jill Morris over the last um, uh, few years. And of course, um, during my previous post, I was ambassador in Paris for the last um, five years. Uh, we've, we did uh, over 100 of these meetings actually in, in presenza, as it were, um, but also a lot um, uh, online during the uh, pandemic uh, uh, as well. Um, I just want to say a few words um, before we go to to, to your questions, which is um, really the most important important thing. Um, the first is is, um, is is a little bit about me. Um, I, as I say, have been the ambassador in uh, Paris for the last uh, for the last five years. Um, I know a bit about Italy, but uh, I would say my knowledge of Italy is not as um, deep as uh, perhaps as it was uh, in France. So I'm looking forward very much to. Um, getting to know this country uh, well. I've done uh, five months language training, full-time language training for um, between September and uh, the beginning of uh, February, going back to being a student after all these these years, um, most of it uh, in, in Florence. Um, but I have a connection to Italy that um, goes back to my childhood. My dad was in the Royal Navy and uh, we were posted to the NATO base near Naples, um, a very long time ago, during the late 70s, um, between when I was eight to 11. And although I was at school in the UK, um, I remember very well coming home uh, for holidays here and uh, very deliberately my first visit as ambassador, my first official visit was to Naples and we managed to find the um, house uh, our family used to live in uh, just outside Pozzuoli. Um, and the family that lived there now, we all had tea together. It's the first time I've been in that house for over 40 years. It was pretty emotional, emotional, af emotional afternoon. Um, so I have that connection to Italy and also uh, my wife, who's French, and I um, got engaged here in Rome. So uh, the love story continues um, with Italy and uh, I'd never expected to um, uh, end up here as the British ambassador, but I asked to come here after um, uh, after uh, Paris, and I'm very fortunate to have been appointed. But I really believe in this um, relationship. I think uh, Italy is a very important partner of the United Kingdom. Um, all of you, I imagine, uh, listening to this call and taking part in it, share um, that love for this country um, that I have. If you're if you're living here, but it's obviously a, um, a an unusual a strange moment to be starting as the new ambassador uh, at a moment of grave crisis in Europe when we have um, uh, a war on European soil not so very far from uh, Italy. I've spent part of my career uh, in the past in Bosnia. Um, I've done two tours in Bosnia, one um, the most recent one um, working as chief of staff to Paddy Ashton. Um, helping to try to rebuild that country after a terrible war. Um, since I've been here over the last two months, Italy and the United Kingdom have been working absolutely hand in hand to um, uh, respond to Russia's aggression. Uh, Italy's response has been extremely strong and our unity, I think, is extremely impressive as the Western alliance at the moment, and we need to maintain that. That unity. So obviously that's taking up a lot of my mine and my team's time at the moment working with our 
um, Italian colleagues. And um, the second thing uh, I want to say is that I know it's been a difficult few years, as it has been in France and as it has been has it has been indeed um, all over Europe and all over the world with the pandemic, which we hope we are now um, emerging from. Um, fingers crossed. Um, I hope to be able to see many of you um, in presenza, either at uh, the residence here, this magnificent residence and its wonderful garden. Um, we have plans to welcome the British community here um, in the coming coming months. And I hope to meet many of you in person, either here um, or uh, around the country. Um, we obviously have um, our departure from the European Union. We've had our departure from the U European Union, which has meant um, a period of significant change, I know, for many of you. And we're here to talk about partly about the consequences of that today, your rights and um, how we make sure um, that things go as smoothly as they, they can. Uh, I'm committed to um, you know, doing that. I see myself very much as your representative. I'm your ambassador. This is your embassy. Um, I'm fortunate to have a very, very experienced team um, on this call. We have a very experienced consular team, many of whom you will have seen on um, these previous calls. So thank you to um, Jerry, Caroline and Vittoria, and um, uh, they'll be helping to answer the questions this evening. We're going to carry on um, the meetings that we've been having over the last uh, few years. We're absolutely really going to continue that effort. It's a key part of this embassy's work. And only yesterday, for example, I did two meetings in Perugia and um, another one in Florence with our compatriots um, there. And the third point I just want to make is, you know, as I said a moment ago, I, I hope to meet many of you. I hope to draw on your experience of this um, uh, country. I'm trying to get around it as quickly as I can in my initial weeks. Uh, I've been here just over two months and I'm trying to get to all 20 Italian official regions in my first uh, 100 days. Yesterday in Umbria we notched up the 11th, um, but I'm on the road as a, as a result a lot. Um, and uh, these are just the, the initial visits I'll be doing, um, but uh, I look forward to meeting many of you on on those visits and drawing on your experience. So with that, um, Caroline, let's go to let's go to questions and points, comments, whatever you feel like um, asking about. Caroline is kind of going to sort of compare and the rest of us will um, chip in as appropriate. Caroline, over to you. Thanks, Ed. So Thanks, we've, Ed. we've got a, a great question from um, Michael Jack to start us off. So at a time when UK relationships with the EU are under pressure due to the Northern Ireland Protocol, what steps would you like British residents in Italy to undertake to help develop and improve Anglo-Italian relationships? Well, that is a very good um, question, Michael, and thank you for that question. I know we've already been corresponding a bit um, on the issue of driving licences, which may be um, we'll touch on uh, in in a moment. Um, I mean, look, I I would say this. First of all, I th I really appreciate the question because I see, in a sense, us all as being ambassadors um, for 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 our country. Um, I mean, obviously that's my job, but um, uh, you know, we're all Brits, and um, uh, when I was in um, uh, Paris, we set up a program called Les Voisins, uh, the Neighbours, um, which was designed to celebrate the people to people ties, as the jargon goes, between our two countries. And in the case of um, Britain and Italy, we have tens of thousands of Brits um, living here in Italy, like you on this call, uh, like you, Michael. And then we have hundreds of thousands of Italians living in um, living in the in the UK, 700,000 Italians in the UK. And I want during my time as ambassador to uh, draw on those two communities to further 
further to cement the relationship between our, our countries, which is already very close, which is based on huge affection and very long standing ties. Everyone, everywhere I go in this country, I see evidence of um, of those ties, whether it was doing my language training in um, in Florence, where practically every street I went round had a plaque to a, a British citizen who'd lived there at some some point. But on your question, I mean, what can we do today? I mean, I think the most important um, point I have, and I, ho I hope you won't feel this is too political. I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't want to be political, but I really do feel very strongly that with the crisis in Ukraine, a war in Ukraine, that um, when, you know, we've said that Britain was leaving the European Union, but not leaving Europe, I think that crisis is demonstrating that basic fact every day. You know, we are a European country by geography, by culture, by history, by present and by the future. And um, uh, I think, you know, the way the United Kingdom is responding to what's happened in Ukraine, but also the way Italy is responding shows that closeness. You know, we're working together every day and the G7, our leaders spoke on Sunday and the G7 forum. Um, uh, we're, our foreign secretary will be meeting her counterpart later this week at the G7. Um, we're meeting all the time in NATO. So that I, I think that's the main point I would I would um, I, I think is is true and is important in the relationship between our countries. Thank you, Ed. And and moving on to a, a completely different subject, um, as you've you've already anticipated, um, we are receiving a lot of questions on um, on driving licences. Um, people are asking for an, an update on on that process. Um, so that people can exchange their license for an Italian license um, without the need for a test. It has specifically been pointed out that um, if you uh, if you already hold a UK license, but you have to take a test, you'll be starting the whole process again. So you'll be losing the categories that you already have, um, you know, the, the the history of your license and everything. So there, there's um, there's a, a lot of strong feeling about this. Yeah, well, maybe I can start. If I respond to that initially, and then um, Jerry or um, Caroline, if you want to, or Victoria, if you want to add anything, please do. Um, the first point I want to make is that uh, I know how important this issue is, and so do all my team. Um, you know, I regard it as the, the the sort of major issue in the bilateral relationship on the consular side, on the citizen side. For me, as the ambassador, I can see that it's 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 the thing that we need to fix um, and, uh, uh, you know, we've been working on it since I've been here and um, we haven't solved it yet, um, uh, but I've discussed it with our transport secretary in the UK. Um, he's discussed it uh, last week with his um, uh, with his Italian counterpart. Um, I saw Minister Giovannini two days ago and raised it um, with him then. Um, I raised it with the junior uh, transport minister here as well. Um, so it is very, it is very live. We're trying to, um, we, we have this extension, as you know, until the 31st of uh, December this year. But that is not so very far away. And we need to, um, you know, the clock is ticking and we need to try and um, get an agreement with the Italians on the exchange of, of licenses. We have such an agreement um, with every other EU country apart from Spain and Portugal. Um, but I can't guarantee you that we will be able to do it. I, I hope we will, and I'm fairly confident that we will, but I can't be sure. Um, so um, this may be less welcome advice, but if you want to be really sure, um, uh, you know, you should at least think about whether to go down the route of taking an Italian test now, because then, you know, whatever happens later in the year, um, you'd be OK. But, we, you know, we're giving it, um, we're, we're applying a lot of effort to it. We will continue to do that. Um, and I know, you know, if you're living if you're a Brit living in a um, hilltop town in the countryside in, in Italy, you absolutely need your car um, to go anywhere. And um, 
Uh, so that's that's the, the situation, that's the context. Um, we'll continue to keep you all updated on it. Um, more generally, you know, I want us to both to hold these, we'll, we'll continue to hold these sessions regularly. I'll also be doing a regular newsletter, as I know Jill did in the past and I did um, when I was in France. Um, but that's that's how I see how I how I see it at the moment. Jerry, Caroline, Victoria, this is less your part of ship, I think, isn't it? Your healthcare is more your your part of ship. But do you want to add anything? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I would add also. I know we've had quite a few um, questions saying that some of the local driving offices are quite confused about. Um, the process um, that UK nationals need to go through at the moment. So I would, um, you know, absolutely acknowledge that it is something we're aware of. Just, I mean, it's also because we just have so many of the local offices um, dealing with this. So um, it's, it's, uh, we find there isn't always a consistent approach. So that can be a challenge as well. But um, I would flag that all the key kind of documents that have been issued by the Italian government on the process that UK national, UK license holders need to follow are all up on our living in Italy guide. So if you think your local motor office isn't doing quite the right thing, it's definitely worth having a look at the living in Italy guide and having um, downloading some of those, what we call the circolari, the circulars that have actually been issued officially by the Italian government and perhaps going into your office with one of those. So one example would be, you know, when you actually started the exchange process. Um, so it, it's, I think it's important to be able to kind of go in fully equipped. Um, but as you say, the the sort of um, the situation at the moment is that you do need to resit uh, a test if you're going to get an Italian license um, at the moment. I would just, sorry, just it's always more, you know, there's always something extra to add. That applies to people who were resident before the start of the year. It is worth flagging that if you move to Italy after the start of this year, you have 12 months to use your UK driving licence. So that could actually extend, you know, if you moved last month, that will extend beyond the grace period. So maybe it's worth just flagging that as well. So it's it's all a bit complicated, but it's all there up on our Living in Italy guide. Yeah, that is a very, that is a very good point. Can I, can I just add um, another plug for the Living in Italy guide? I mean, I, I read it carefully yesterday before our, meetings in Perugia and um, Florence and as for its counterpart in um, uh, France it is a very comprehensive document and you can find it on gov.uk it has a lot it doesn't have the answer to every single question but it, it's pretty comprehensive so please do take it if you google gov.uk living in Italy it will pop up I second that um, and on to a, another different subject. So um, Jill would like to know if there is any hope for homeowners in Italy who are unable or unwilling to become Italian residents, but fan, find their lives completely disrupted by the 90 day rule. Yeah, um, I'm very aware of the 90 day rule in Italy um, and in generally. Um, Jerry or Caroline? Why either of you want? I mean, I, I don't think we can give much encouragement, I fear, but um, do either of you want to comment? So, I mean, this is a Schengen border code requirement that um, doesn't just affect UK nationals. Um, so um, it's unlikely that would be changed um, in the short term and, and just for sort of Italy. Um, you know, absolutely recognise that this is a big, significant change for those who were kind of popping between the two countries on a regular basis. Clearly, this is a significant change for people. Um, and, you know, I suppose it's about deciding, you know, as the, as the person who asked the questions already sort of referred to where you want your place of residence to be. You know, if you if you're finding you're spending more and more time or you want to spend more and more time in Italy, then I guess it's about a personal decision of whether you actually move your residency here. And, you know, even, you know, if you're not covered by the withdrawal agreement, clearly there are other, you still have a right to come and move and live to, in Italy. It will be a different process, but there are definitely routes available to you to do that. Um, so, you know, it sounds a bit harsh to say, actually, you just need to decide where your residency is. But at the moment, that that's sort of the situation. And you're absolutely right. There's the 90 and 180 day 
limit and I would just underline um, that's for the whole Schengen area so just be aware you know um, yes you can spend that 90 days just in Italy or you can spend it within the Schengen area as long as you don't go over the 90 days. Thank you um, Again, and then uh, there are details set sorry sorry Carol. there are okay. details set out um, in the um, in the living in Italy guide, the options that Jerry refers to about long stay visas and and so on. Bye. <laughs> um, so we have a, a another rather technical question, um, perhaps uh, for, for for Jerry, um, about returning to the UK. Um, Malcolm is asking whether we could please go over the procedure his Italian wife will have to follow if they wish to return to live um, in the UK at some stage where, where, where they own a flat jointly? Yeah, this is a question that's very regularly raised with us, as you might imagine. Many, many people have Italian family members, uh, UK nationals living here, spouses, partners um, and so on. Um, so um, now that the situation would be that the uh, your Italian spouse would would need to fulfil requirements under the UK immigration system. So um, without sort of wanting to get too technical, because obviously that's something that is um, is the competency of the Home Office. Um, you know, the UK has this new points based immigration system um, and your Italian spouse would need, um, if settling in the UK with yourself, um, would need to fulfil the requirements. There are different routes, just as there are for UK nationals to come and settle in Italy. There are a number of different routes. Um, so it's definitely worth um, having a look, um, a thorough look at what visa would be the most suitable for your uh, Italian family member. Um, I would just say another couple of things. One is that um, clearly as a UK national, there's no, you know, there's no requirement of that nature. As a UK national, you can go back to the UK and settle, uh, you know, whenever you like, um, for however long you wish. Um, and also for Italian nationals, if you're just visiting the UK, um, you can do so. Uh, visa free for up to six months uh, and you would need Italian passports because we get lots of questions on this so maybe I'm I'm heading off some of future questions you would need to use your Italian passport as an Italian national and you can continue to use the e-gates to enter across the UK border so for visits um, you know uh, six months visa free and make sure you use Italian passport but, but for settling in the UK then you need to um, ensure you've met the requirements under the immigration system. And carrying on from that question, actually, um, about uh, which pa about passports um, to use. So um, Lincoln is asking his his daughter is a dual national, Italian uh, British, and they were stopped at the border traveling to the UK. She was using her British passport, but the guard said she would have to travel on an Italian passport. Is that right? Presumably, this was the guard, the Italian border guard. I mean, I dare I throw this one back at you, Caroline, because you're definitely our dual national expert. But I think that sounds a bit odd to me. That's the first time I've heard that. Um, there is, I mean, we advise people if you have two travel documents, um, you know, it's often more straightforward to leave the country with your Italian document and enter the UK with your UK one. If you have it, I mean, that's just a kind of practical operational, it seems to make things easier. But I've never heard of that being a legal requirement. That sounds um, as though someone might have been a bit confused on that occasion. Um, and also just to ensure that what you've booked your ticket with, you are carrying that document, whether it be the Italian. You know, you have to put the number in when you book your ticket to so make sure you've got that on you. But no, that's the first time I've heard of that. I don't know if you want to add anything, Caroline, but that sounds odd to me. I, I agree completely. Um, you know, it, it's just it's it's easier to go through a border with that particular passport. So if you're dual national to go through the Italian border either way with your Italian passport and to go through the British border either way with your British passport. Um, but I would suggest that you have a right to travel with 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 with, with any passport. Um, and as Jerry says, uh, to show the airline when you um, when you get to the airline, you need to show the passport that you used to, to check in with. I was switching the mic off, but no, that's it's me again. <laughs> um, so I also have a, a question from 
uh, a gentleman who uh, is uh, British. He has uh, a job waiting in Italy, but he's actually been in limbo for seven months in the UK awaiting his Italian work visa. Um, his job offer may be withdrawn um, and he's 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 getting quite desperate and he's asking whether whether we can help. Um, I, I would I would answer that um, myself directly. Unfortunately, um, immigration issues such as visas um, is um, is not one that we can advise on. It's a home country um, uh, responsibility. Um, and I would uh, signpost both to the Living In Guide that we've we've mentioned before um, and also to the Italian um, Ministry of Interior, they have specific websites where you can look for the kind of visa that you need um, and uh, and the, the contacts if you're if you're in difficulty. So I'm sorry that we 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 can't help with that one. I don't know whether you have anything to add to that, Jerry. I'd also say um, travel advice. So Italy travel advice is where we've got those links to that. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs publishes. I mean, this gentleman's obviously obviously already applied for visas, but for people applying for a visa in the future. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has a very clear website in English with a drop down menu where you can see which visa route is most applicable to yourself. And it actually, once you've chosen that, it tells you the exact process to go through, including what fee you need to pay, what application form you need to complete and where to present it. So it's very um, it's very clear. As I say, it's in English and you can access it via our travel advice page. I mean, the only thing I would add to that, Caroline, is that we have we do know we have been made aware that the, the waiting times for some work visas can be quite lengthy. That has been sort of flagged to us. Um, and it is something we have, um, you know, been in discussions with the Italian government about. But as you say, this is this firmly sits um, sits with them and, and the Italian consulate overseas. I think uh, could I just add uh, a couple of points? I mean, I can understand, first of all, um, Lincoln, how frustrating that must be, um, to put it mildly. Um, I mean, I think the general issue, as Jerry says, we, we you know, we we can continue, we will on the on the. You know, that's the first time I've I've heard that. So so, you know, we will take up the general issue with the Italian authorities as we've been doing. It's very useful to hear things like this if we've got you know, a, a particular sticking point. Um, and presumably, you're also in touch with the Italian consulate in. London, presumably you, you applied through them, but it might be worth um, uh, being in touch with them if you're not already. Or elsewhere, I mean, they have consulates not only in, I don't know where you live, but there's they have consulates elsewhere in the UK. Good, next Thank up. you. Um, next up, we're moving on to the um, Carta di Soggiorno. Um, James would like to know whether we can exchange uh, a temporary carta di soggiorno for a permanent one when we reach five years continuous, re continuous residency, or do we have to wait for our temporary card to expire before being entitled to a permanent one? Shall I take that one? No. Please do. I don't know the answer, so please do. <laughs> Um, the withdrawal agreement is very clear on this point, which is as soon as you've accumulated those five years of continuous residency, you have a right to the 10 year validity card. So it's not the expiry date on your card. Um, so you could have the five year, um, the five year valid one for just one year because you just had one more year to do before you get your pre permanent residency status. So the withdrawal agreement is very clear on this. We do know that some questore are requiring or saying to UK nationals that, um, no, you can't have the permanent residence one uh, until your temporary one expires. Um, we've been raising each individual um, questore immigration office that has said that with the ministry, flagging it to them, just to, to um, ask that that's, that's corrected. Um, but clearly it would be very useful to have um, something also from the Ministry of Interior, you know, again, one of, uh, one of these chocolates that we could then publish on our living in guide that makes this very explicit um, so that you would have something to show the quest order in your local area. Um, so that is something that we are actively engaging the Ministry of Interior on and requesting that that is made a little bit clearer to the 105 immigration officers that there are in, in Italy. But as I say, the withdrawal agreement is very, very clear on this point. And uh, sorry, just to add, because 
I always like to add something, sorry. Um, the um, It is worth getting the, te you know, if you have five years residency, it means you have permanent residency status. You may think, well, what's the difference between two bits of plastic? Well, actually, the, the 10 year validity card does state you're a permanent resident, you know, actually states in black and white on the card that you are permanent residents. And that is quite important because you do enjoy additional rights, you know, whether it's healthcare, um, kind of a, an automatic registration to healthcare if you're eligible, um, or um, extra time you can be overseas without losing your rights. So it's definitely worth having if you're eligible for it. Thanks, Jerry. Um, and then a question on um, Italian citizenship. Um, so um, Josephine's husband Josephine is British uh, with two children and her husband is Italian. Um, she's been living in Italy for over 22 years and now wishes to get Italian citizenship and wants to know whether we offer any assistance to British nationals applying for Italian citizenship. Um, there's also um, a secondary issue in that all her documents are in her married name, but um, she says, as I understand it, Italian citizenship is given only to women in their maiden name. So on advice, I mean, Caroline, I don't know if you want to say something. I mean, I can say something about the second issue, which is um, I'm really glad you've raised this because it, it's, a, it's a really key issue for um, uh, ourselves in the consular team. It's something we have been working with the Italian government on for many, many months because we've recognised just how many UK nationals, especially women who have got married, are struggling with this issue and particularly with the Italian citizenship process. So um, the Italian government um, require evidence to prove that you are the same person if you've changed your surname because they recognise your birth certificate, in other words, your maiden name, as your key identity. So if you have other documents then in a married name, that causes difficulty. Um, so that's the issue. Uh, in terms of what we're doing about it, um, we are seeking a route through this with the Italian government. In the meantime, we know from UK nationals who've managed to resolve the issue with the local authority of different options that have worked. And we've put those all together in a guide for UK nationals, which is published on the British Embassy website on our notarial pages or also via the Living in Italy guide. So I do, I, it's not a it's not a complete answer for you, but I do advise you to have a look at that guide because as I say, it does give you some um, uh, alternatives of what you can try with your prefettura because it will be the prefettura for the Italian citizenship. So there's different things around um, getting a, a historic record from HM passport office. If you've had passports issued in different names, there's um, uh, an option of a self-declaration, which you might be able to do in front of us. Um, so there's different options that you could um, consider to help resolve this issue. If you are still struggling having looked at all those and you're still being asked for something you cannot produce, then get in touch with us. And you can do that via that page, via the British Embassy Rome notarial page where we have this guide. Um, and we might be able to speak to the, to the local authority on your behalf to see what they would accept. So um, that's a very long way of me saying it's a big issue. We know it is. Um, we've been working on it for months and hopefully Hopefully, through continued engagement with the Italian government, we're going to come up with um, a single solution for UK nationals on this. Can I can I just add to that? I mean, I, this I first came across this issue yesterday in um, both. We had questions on it, didn't we, Jerry? In both um, Perugia and in Florence, so with, with um, uh, people in exactly this situation. So. Um, as Jerry says, it is very common. It's not something I'd encountered in in France. Um, so it's something we we you know the team have obviously are interacting with the Italians on it. Um, but again, I think it's one of the things that I will try and lean into as well because it does seem to be a particularly a particular issue here, and um, we do need to try to to fix it. Um, good. Thank you. I, I would, yeah, I would, I would add on the issue of um, actual Italian citizenship applications. Again, that's an Italian government uh, responsibility, so it's not something that the the British consulate or the British embassy can advise on. Um, uh, the one thing 
that uh, is perhaps our responsibility is some of the documentation that you may need for your um, uh, Italian citizenship application. Um, so perhaps if you need to apply for a more recent birth certificate or you need to have that legalized or um, a police um, a police record certificate and uh, all of that you can get information of uh, for on on gov uk so just go on www.gov.uk in the search field at the beginning um just type in what whatever you're looking for whatever the italian government is 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 asking you for um and you will find you will find information on that uh, on there um and then we have a, a question for vito we have a question on healthcare um so um chris Christine is asking, um, I'm um, I'm going on holiday soon. I have um, a, an Italian EHIC card or t uh, the Tessera Team um, as, a, as a resident in Italy. Can I use that um, to access healthcare uh, while I'm abroad in the EU? Thank you, Caroline. Uh, so the answer is yes, you can use the, the Italian EHIC uh, called Team uh, when traveling to the UK or to another EU country. Um, so in the UK, it's important to underline that even uh, if you are British, uh, if you're resident in Italy, um, you, you need to show that you are covered for healthcare through um, you know, your, your Italian uh, EHIC. It's not an automatic right to access healthcare just because you, are, you have UK nationality if you don't live in the UK, because access to healthcare in the UK is based on residency. So if you move your residency to another country, when in the UK you should uh, show, you know, what the entitlement you have. So your Italian uh, term is, which is the back of your Italian health card, um, it's um, perfectly acceptable in the UK and of course in other in other EU countries. And the same, of course, if you have Italian relatives uh, uh, traveling with you. And the same thing is uh, uh, applies if you have UK relatives visiting Italy. It's important that uh, uh, they apply for the UK uh, GHIC, now it's called the Global Health Insurance Card, that they can use in Italy in case of um, emergency or necessary care while they are on holiday. And um, that would give them cover, obviously, in public uh, hospitals. Always advisable to take a travel insurance because the term, the HIHIC, doesn't cover everything, like repatriation, for example. Um, so we always advise to, to take travel insurance as well. Thanks, Vito. Um, and then moving on to um, a very hot topic at the moment. Um, Gillian would uh, like to know um, about uh, voting right so she says following the referendum there was a lot of debate about giving by, back the right to vote in the UK to disenfranchised British citizens living abroad and is there any update on this yes there is an update um, which is that um, the 15-year rule is uh, being abolished um, and votes are being restored to British citizens um, overseas um, the law has just gone through Parliament. Um, it completed its passage on the 28th of April, I think, and uh, is now being um, uh, implemented. It will take um, it will take a little while to get it implemented. So I think, you know, you'd be looking at voting in elections from um, spring 2024. Um, but uh, that um, 15 year rule has uh, been scrapped um, and uh, again if you go to um, uh, gov.uk as well as the ele electoral commission website um, it sets out uh, uh, in more detail what, what all that involves and um, I'm very aware of um, the strength of feeling as my team are on this issue um, in the meetings I held when I was ambassador in France, it was the subject that came up again and again, perfectly understandably. Um, and indeed, it came up in our meeting in Perugia, Perugia yesterday. Um, so that's good news. And I, I'd just like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to um, Harry Schindler um, of this parish, as it were, um, who I know has campaigned for um, about 20 years uh, on this. Jerry, do you want to add anything? 
think no, I think no. that's that's it. Pretty yeah. Much. Thanks, Ed. No, no. Okay, and um, and we have uh, another question for um, for Vito. So um, uh, Oliver says that um, his um, his testa sanitaria is uh, is expiring, and he's been asked for uh, a carta di soggiorno in order to renew it. He's been living here obviously since before um, since before EU exit. Um, is that right? Um... No, it's not right, because uh, if you're covered under the withdrawal agreement, you shouldn't be asked to produce uh, further evidence of your residence in Italy. Um, so your carta di soggiorno, as we know, is not you know, something that you should uh, apply for obligatory, even though it's strongly advised that UK nationals apply for it because it's a way to prove your rights. But uh, local authorities cannot uh, uh, really... Um, expect you to have one uh, and uh, cannot deny you to, for example, to register for health care if you're a resident in Italy. So uh, I would suggest uh, uh, you get back to the local health authority. Uh, we have some guidance uh, um, which is linked to our living in guide that was published by the Ministry of Health about uh, uh, how um, uh, UK nationals who are covered under the withdrawal agreement are protected in this sense. And, uh, but if you still have problems and you don't manage to resolve the issue, you can get in touch with us through our um, online form on the, our Living in Guides pages, and we will try to, to help uh, perhaps liaising with the, with the Health Authority. Fabulous, thank you. Um, and then we have um, a, a quite straightforward question from um, Faye, who wants to know the best way to renew her British passport, which expires this year. Um, I would I would respond to that if that's OK. Um, so if you're living in Italy, the absolute best way is to go online www.gov.uk forward slash overseas hyphen passports, um, where you can fill in all of your information, upload your photograph and make your payment online, um, send off any documents to the UK, the website takes you through the process step by step and your passport is sent back to you in Italy. So absolutely the uh, the, the most straightforward way. Um, we have a, just, a, another I question. Add, yes. Um, Caroline, can I just add um, two things? I mean, from personal experience, because I did it when I was on my language training and um, earlier in the year, last year, it is a very straightforward process indeed, and it, it's it's quite easy to do. Having said that, I think the passport office is having some delays at the moment, certainly for applications within the UK, and I imagine for overseas ones, so you should apply in good time. Um, I think they're advising 10, is it 10 weeks at the moment? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have another question about the 90 and 180 day rule. Um, so that's uh, about travel within the Schengen area to, to places where you're not resident. Um, Fiona would like to know what happens if you do go over the 90 days? Is there any retribution? Well, the short answer is there could be. So um, it's definitely worth not going over the 90 days. And it, it's just worth underlining that um, although you're resident in Italy, I presume this person is resident in Italy, you also are limited to that 90 and 180 days when travelling around the Schengen area. Um, I mean, there aren't internal borders within the Schengen area, so um, uh, there's not going to be potentially probably not that kind of checking as there would be on an external border. Um, and also, as somebody who's resident in Italy, you shouldn't have your passport um, stamped nor be sort of questioned for reasons for travel. So, it's actually a bit of a grey area in the sense that you need to count those days yourself and you need to just keep evidence of how much time you've spent outside of Italy, but within the Schengen area. So it could be sort of, you know, um, credit card receipts, hotel check in documents, just in case someone does ask you to evidence just how long you've been um, in the Schengen area. So as I say, it's not quite as straightforward as someone coming from the UK into the Schengen area, travelling around the Schengen area. It's really your responsibility 
to keep an eye on those 90 and 180 days. In terms of what could happen to you, I mean, that's that's where you've overstayed. You know, it depends what the how the country deals with overstayers. Each country has a slightly different approach in the Schengen area of how they um, respond to people who've overstayed. But um, it would, you know, if you are concerned that you've had to overstay for some urgent reason, I would definitely suggest um, speaking to the country's local authority, to so the immigration office, as soon as possible about your situation. But it would be up to the country that you're in and where you've overstayed your 90 days as to how they would then respond. But it's definitely not advisable um, uh, if, uh, unless, it, of course, if it's for an emergency. Thank you. Um, and then another question about um, residency. So Michael would like to know whether a French permit, um, so a, a, a carta issued under the withdrawal agreement, can it be converted into an Italian one for the purposes of work or do they need to reapply? So, no, I mean, I, I suppose it's worth underlining your withdrawal agreement rights are based on where you're resident. So um, if you've received, uh, let's call it a French withdrawal agreement card, um, I don't know the official term. I don't <laughs> I'm afraid it might be able to. That I can help you with. It's yeah. called the, uh, uh, titre de résidence. Thank you. Um, if you've been issued with that under the withdrawal agreement, that's because you had your residency, you know, um, before the end of the transition period in France. And therefore, your rights stem from that. And they are based about, you know, it's linked to your residency in, in France. So you don't carry those withdrawal agreement rights to you should you want to then take up residency in another area, uh, another country like Italy, um, Spain and so on. Um, so you would you would um, you can, of course, be absent from your country, a place of residency for a certain period of time, but you don't carry your rights and you can't convert uh, a French withdrawal agreement card for an Italian withdrawal agreement card because the Italian version of the withdrawal agreement card has been issued to those resident in Italy before the end of the transition period. So sorry if that wasn't the answer you were looking for, but um, no, one can't be exchanged for another. That's not to say you can't go and move to Italy and come and work here, um, but you would need to do it under the Italian immigration um, system as a third country national who isn't covered by the withdrawal agreement. OK, um, I don't currently have any further questions. Um, no, I do. Something's just come through. Um, so something about um, dual nationality. So um, Valentine's mother is a dual national British Croatian and she lives in Italy as a Croatian citizen. So she's registered with the Comune as a Croatian citizen. When booking a flight to the UK, which passport details should she enter in the airline's booking form? I mean, that's a, 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 absolutely a personal decision. You have the right to enter either. I mean, it, 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 it's not quite clear whether she holds passports under both nationality because you can be a, of a national but not hold a passport of that um, nas nationality. But if she holds both passports, I mean, as we've said, um, people find it, we've heard from people that it's um, easier to enter the UK and leave the UK with a UK passport, as you've said, Caroline, so that might be um, the one you want to use. But really, it's it's a personal choice. I mean, it doesn't really influence um, your kind of travel arrangements. Um, so that's really up to her. There isn't a legal requirement, I think, is, is what I'm trying to say um, that we clarified earlier. It's really a choice that you have. Agreed. Um, Jerry, do you have anything um in particular that you would like to flag up to uh, to our audience today? I don't have any more specific questions. There's, um, we're still getting a lot of questions on driving licences, so I don't know whether we want to give that update again. 
Sure, I, I'm, I, I can quickly just, um, the practicalities of it, um, uh, if, if uh, shall I just underline that again? First of all, a big plug for the Living in Italy guide. Sorry, we keep saying that, but um, it really does have um, information on pretty much all the questions that have been asked um, this evening, including driving licences. You know, how long the grace period is, which is until the end of the year, who is covered by that grace period? You know, we're talking about UK driving licence holders um you know uh, when you needed to be resident by to be covered by that grace period that kind of level of detail it's all up on the living in italy guide um so please do check that and also as i say it includes some of the key official documents that have been issued by the italian government on um how uk license holders um should be sort of handled in this current time so if you are struggling with your local um driving office please do have a look at those as well but sorry, Ed, I don't know if you want to underline again something around that. No, I just want to say um, for those, I mean, at risk of um, repeating myself over the, who, for those who were on the beginning of the call, but if you've joined more recently, um, I mean, just to stress that, you know, I and my team, as, as Jerry has just set out, we really get the importance of this driving license issue. Um, we know, you know, we've got this extension until the end of the year. Uh, but the end of the year isn't so very far away and we need to try to get it resolved. We are, um, uh, you know, the government, the British government is um, working with the Italian government on it. Um, our tr I've spoken to our transport minute, our transport secretary about it. Our transport secretary has um, uh, spoken to his Italian counterpart about it last week. Um, I raised it with the Italian uh, transport minister again myself earlier this week. Um, so we are, um, we haven't yet got it resolved. We're working um, to negotiate to, to to have an agreement with Italy, as we have with other countries, that will allow for the exchange. I think at the moment we, you know, we have agreements with every uh, EU member state apart from Italy, Spain, and Portugal. Um, so we're we're absolutely on it, and we will keep you updated through our newsletters and through um, further meetings like this. Thank you. We have had some specific questions, actually, Ed. Um, if you're able to say anything about what the sticking points are on the negotiations. Um, no, I think not really. I mean, there, there, there are issues about, you know, where um, it applies and, 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 and issues like that. But I think it, it's probably better if I don't at the moment. But um, we're trying to work through those, those uh, as I say, at, at the moment. Um, what I can say is that the issue with respect to um, Spain. It's not, you might have seen in the news coverage that the agreement with Spain has recently expired and without an agreement having been reached. It's, we're not dealing with the same issue here in Italy. It's not the same same problem. So you shouldn't read across from what's happened in Spain um, will necessarily happen here. Um, we, hope it, we hope we'll be able to resolve it, but I, I can't give a, a guarantee that we will, but we, we're on it. Thank you. Um, do we want to just, just to close, Joe? Maybe say um, some uh, some maybe headline um, information about the Carta di Soggiorno um, or about um, where people can go to get more information on anything that we've spoken about today. Sure, I'll quickly say something about Carta di Soggiorno, which is um, the key um, document that you should request if you're covered by the withdrawal agreement. And that basically means if you were resident in Italy before the 1st of January 2021, so before the end of the transition period, the Italian government has now made available a new um, high security biometric little plastic card that fits brilliantly uh, in your wallet. It's available from your local questura, so not from your comune, but from your local immigration office. As Vito said earlier, it's not mandatory. Um, so you can't have your rights denied if you don't hold it. But our advice remains um, to get it as soon as possible, because frankly, it will just make things probably a little bit easier uh, in Italy in accessing all sorts of things, um, because it's it quotes the withdrawal agreement on the card um, and it's the best evidence of your rights. It's also worth underlining that um, 
you know, uh, all EU member states that have issued this withdrawal agreement card, it's all in the same format. So it is very easily recognisable as well by other member states. Um, so it is definitely worth getting. It should be, um, I recognise not in all cases, but it should be a fairly straightforward process if you're already registered here. And there is a very um, specific guide on our Living in Italy page, a step by step guide on how to request it. Um, and, and let us know how you get on. I think we're really keen to hear how it's going. Um, you know, with 105 quest all day, um, it's not always easy to keep track of how, um, how it's going in every region. So do get in touch and let us know how you found the process. I think that would be really, really helpful because we, we're, um, we both speak to the ministry about it, um, but we also speak to individual immigration officers. So do get in touch with us. Um, so that's the Carta di Soggiorno. And um, more generally, um, as we've already said, please, please have a look at our Living in Italy um, guide. Please spread the word. Tell your friends and neighbours to have a look at it. Um, and also check out the travel advice if you've got people coming to visit you um, over the summer, for example. Um, please check the travel advice um, for them as well. Um, there's lots of interesting, useful stuff up there, including something we haven't mentioned, um, the kind of COVID COVID-19 regulations, entry requirements and so on. It's all up there on the travel advice. Thanks, Jerry. Um, and then just back to, to, to Ed to, to, to close. Um, we have a, a one last question for you from um, Faye, who would like to know if you plan to go to Sicily anytime soon. Hi, Faye. Yes, I absolutely come to plan, uh, plan to come to um, uh, Sicily. Where do you where do you live? I might come pay you a visit. If you'd welcome that, I'll, I'll be coming to. I mean, as I said, I'm trying to do. Well, I'm. I will do all Italian um, regions within my first hundred days of starting in this role. Um, and I think Sicily is one of the last. Actually, I'm coming to, so it'll be sometime later in June. Thank you. Um, and that's rash, all we have time for today. <laughs> So thank you, thank you very, very much um, to, to Ed, to uh, Jerry, and to Vito, um, and wishing everybody a really lovely evening. Thank you for joining yeah. us today. Buona serata, and we look forward to um, seeing you all again. Thank you. Hope it was useful. Bye bye. Okay, please stay.